Hi, ladies. Um, so thank you so much for um, your grace. I feel like this week I expended all the energy I pretty much had um, and even felt tired today. Um, <clears throat> so I'm doing my Tuesday video on a Friday and my Friday video on a Saturday. Um, and I don't know what is wrong, why it's taking me so long to get this recipe up. I think I'm just going so much that uh, getting these recipes actually posted is anyway just an excuse I guess but um, so uh, if you're new to this tip number one always uh, put on your freezer bags or any container that you will put so away somewhere for a long time what is in it so a, a quick example that's not even a freezer meal I made up some hot chocolate years ago <clears throat> and I made some up for me and I made some up for my kids Two different kinds. Uh, I don't think none of my kids eat like I do, except when I serve dinner. That those kids eat what I serve. Um, but I didn't know which hot chocolate was which hot chocolate. So even non-freezer things, I think you should label if it's going to be put up for a while. So always label. Um, do not trust yourself. I promise. I have thrown so many things away because I thought I was going to pre-label. So this week we're going to make. Um, sweet and sour chicken and <clears throat> I'm gonna do beef ragu so I have been waiting for um, beef roast to go on sale typically out here <clears throat> we kind of had a cycle I guess where um, beef roast would be on sale about every um, three four five weeks and we have yet to have a buy one get one free sale so uh, we had sirloin on sale last week, so instead of using what I would pretty much always use, which is a beef roast, I'm going to use a sirloin. I feel like it's going to be, if it's not the same, it's going to be close to the same as um, the beef roast would. Um, uh, hopefully it'll turn out great. I mean, I feel like it will. Um, so for instead of the beef roast, I'm going to be using sirloin. Now, if you are not crazy like me and you're not making four of each kind, you might be able to afford a roast, but there's no way I can afford full regular price, like $5.99 or $6.99 a pound roasts for this rest for this freezer plan. Um, so one thing I say a lot in, in any like cooking in your kitchen, use what you've got. Now, with that being said, if you substitute some really weird things and the recipe doesn't turn out, that's not on me. Um, so uh, when I made the lasagna, I had a really busy day that day. Uh, I had a lot going on <clears throat> on that Wednesday. I did not have time to run to town. So I made the crock pot lasagna with what I had in the house. I didn't have a ton of, of parm or mozzarella. I didn't have any ricotta. Uh, so I substituted my blended cottage cheese in place of the ricotta. And um, I've had some questions about the pasta I've used. I used. Um, one thing I have done in the past and actually taken it to our youth and that is always a good um, thumb line on how a recipe is if my family likes it and our youth like it then I think it's a pretty good recipe um, I use the egg life wraps which I basically like egg whites I've used those in place of uh, lasagna noodles and those are definitely on plan and much easier to find than dream fields now what I did to get the dream fields I currently have I think I have three different kinds, but I would like to get some spaghetti in. So I just went online and searched cases of the Dream Fields pasta. And so like every week, every two or three weeks when my husband would get paid, I would always order something, whether it's like a, a protein powder or collagen or something, but I would all I would also try to get Dream Fields pasta. And so I would look for the cheapest price to have it delivered. Um, and that is how I have like the, the lasagna uh, noodles that I have. And that's great for the, the um, crock pot because you have to break them anyway and they come with so many broken in the box so it worked out perfect to um, fit them into the um, crock pot. I do plan on trying to get this recipe up but if you want a super easy put it make it at you know three to two o'clock in the afternoon even one if you wanted but I put it on low for sure. Crock pot lasagna was so easy and so perfect and then I, I don't know if we had any leftovers I think it all got ate up so um, this is not about crock pots, lasagna, I'm not exactly, oh, on the substituting. So um, I feel like the sirloin steak is going to be pretty close when shredded to the beef roast in the ragu recipe. So 
couple of tips. I've wrote out everything on my bags and I've already got them open and ready for tomorrow. That's a big tip. Uh, do as much prep work as you can and this just makes will make tomorrow easier because I've got, I'm sure, a lot to do. My husband's been working on his truck, so we've got a lot to get done. Um, so the easier I can make it for me tomorrow, today, is a blessing. So when we do the freezer meals, how you do these however you want to do them. These are just my tips. When I put these in my freezer, I don't know if it's just my family, you may not have these problems, but typically when I pull these out, there's a little hole in at least one of the meals I pull out of the freezer at least every other week minimum. And that's one reason I have another tip of making sure you thaw them in a, some sort of container because otherwise you could end up with a fridge full of nasty liquid back there or wherever you have your fridge. Um, so on here I have add three carrots. The recipe calls for three medium carrots. I have not been a fan of frozen and then cooked carrots. That has not been something that I particularly am fond of. So I plan on adding the carrots the day I cook them. If you want to add them and freeze them, it might turn out perfect. But I don't know, and again, I don't like to mess up recipes uh, with something I may not like. So again, I'm really weird with dairy that gets cooked like that, and I am weird with carrots like that. So I'm gonna add the carrots the day of. If you want, add them to this bag. The second thing, this recipe calls for like one cup of red wine. If you are completely, you know, no wine, or you don't want to cook with it, or you don't want to worry about having to have wine, um, substitute one cup of beef broth is what I would do. The wine does add a little distinct flavor, but it's not necessary, but it does help with the ragu flavor. Um, and if you do want to use it, but you really don't buy wine, you have a couple of options. One of them is, I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they have like this little box with a little bitty handle, and it has four little bottles in it. If you wanted to buy that, and then just put that up, and then add one of those little bottles to the crock pot, or you could also add it to your bag, this way. Um, which brings me to another one is, if this has a hole in it, and I have put the cup of beef broth or wine in here, and there's a hole, it's going to get all over the fridge, and so it's a waste of an ingredient. And I also will add the um, crushed tomatoes uh, the day I make it. Again, if there's a hole, it's going to leak out. And also, a 28 ounce can of tomatoes is going to add um, bulk to this bag. And if I've, I don't know how many I've done so far, is this week nine? So nine times four, or nine times eight, 72. Although we have eight some, so it's not like I do have 72 freezer meals in my freezer, but I have a lot. And if my math was wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I have on here what I'm going to add the day of. If you, you could add all the ingredients to the ragu, and I think it would turn out fine. Oh, my hairdresser was calling, I'll have to call her back. Sorry, Joy. Um, so you can add everything or be like me and, and leave a couple of things out. It makes it, Joy, I'll call you back. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, so anyway, it's just how I'm gonna do it, but if you really just want the convenient dump and go, just dump it and forget it recipe, put everything in your bag, just uh, be extra careful that you don't get a hold of it, because that would be a few ingredients that are gonna leak out. Okay, and then, the sweet and sour chicken. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna add the pineapple to the bag or not. Um, I cooked perfectly fine, it was delicious. Um, I've got a color back, <laughs> sorry y'all. Um, so I've got four of these, so I did put on the top. So this is kind of like I mentioned in one of my previous videos. If I have things that I'm going to add, like the um, chili or the hamburger soup or this, where again, it's gonna add bulk, um, but I've already pre-purchased it so it can be in my pantry. Um, if you remember from my Asian um, pork, I only had three cans when I did my video because someone ate one of the cans and I didn't put anything on it. Um, so if you want to pre-buy everything so you don't have to worry about what it's gonna cost then, if there's a sale, that's perfect. I love sales. Um, but I've got this wrote on here, or written, um, don't use, it's for sweet and sour chicken. That's just a tip. But if you want, add everything to the bag. 
Um, my other thing I'm going to be doing, I did not get the bag out, but if you're brand new here, I'll explain it. If you're not new, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I, you know, the whole kind of premise behind this whole Fill Your Freezer Fridays isn't just for a specific group. Is anybody can follow along? Um, yes, if you're a man, I had some guy come at me once because he thought I was sexist. Anybody can use my recipes. <laughs> but my, my focal point in this is when I see the moms post on the Facebook page, I made two dinners tonight. I even made three dinners tonight. That breaks my heart. Um, so I'm trying to help the busy families get dinner. And all of my recipes that I've included in this are things that my whole family will eat, maybe with some um, substitutions. My daughter who moved back home to save for a house uh, doesn't like pineapple. She can eat the, the recipe. She just doesn't eat the pineapple. Um, and then like all my cilantro recipes, and I'm a huge cilantro fan, so I have to kind of do some subs for her. But these are all family friendly, and so let me get back to my point of what I will do for the peppers and the onions and the sweet and sour chicken. I go to the freezer section and I get, there's a couple of different vegetables that come in these bags, but one of them I get is um, onions and peppers pre-cut and they're frozen. And what I will do tomorrow, if you watch, I will have these in their stands, which are not necessary, they're just convenient. Um, and I will dump a half of the pepper and onion bag into each of the sweet and sour chicken bags. I don't have to worry about finding a good sell on the peppers or the onions. I don't have to worry about cutting any of that up. It is already done in my freezer bag or my freezer. And I'm gonna dump it straight in here from the freezer and then just go straight back into the freezer. If you don't want to worry about doing that on prep day, you can just dump it in on um, cook day. It's whatever is most convenient for you. Um, but that is what I will be using instead of fresh peppers and onions. Uh, tip number quadruple thousand, I don't know. Um, if you really like bell peppers and you really like onions and you really like their texture, what I would do is I would put them in a separate baggie, like maybe sit it in here and put it on top and then add it near the very end of the cooking. I personally do not like, I'm not a bell pepper fan. I can eat them if they're cooked. But if they are, um, I cannot eat a raw bell pepper. I, I, I wish I could. I would change that about me if I could, but I do not like them. And so when I, all of my recipes, and I have plenty that have bell peppers in them, I cook them and I kind of like my cauliflower rice. I cook and I cook and I cook until they are cooked. So I love this way. It gets the, the I can eat the bell peppers and the onions. I can taste them, but I don't have that texture and it's not overpowering. So if you really, really like the bell pepper and the onions, um, I would add them near the end of the cooking instead of like me, from right from the start. And I would not use fresh for me because I, I really want them cooked down. Um, I think that's about it for all of my tips. It's probably a very long tip video uh, and what we're gonna be making tomorrow. Um, and I'm probably gonna do about one more week of this, maybe two max. This is, it's, it's been a lot for me with my weird summer. Um, and I don't know about the passing of my friend. I don't know exactly when that's gonna be. Uh, I don't think we have another week, but we'll see. I don't know what my life is gonna be like, but I will um, do my best to make sure I get here and get a few more of these recipes for y'all. Because again, I just wanna be a blessing and I wanna help that overwhelmed person who is just tired of, of cooking and, and doesn't wanna to come to the kitchen. Just throw some ingredients in your freezer bags, throw it into your crock pot and call it a day. Oh, real quick side note. This you serve over pasta if you want, but there are so many options besides spaghetti squash, besides zoodles. Now we even have palmini. My local little town Walmart has palmini and uh, I think spaghetti and angel hair. Um, if you don't want to worry about trying to find Dreamfields. And then for the um, sweet and sour chicken, there's a couple of options. You can do uh, my cauliflower, or fried cauliflower rice, whatever it's called. Um, you could do that with this. Um, my biggest tip again, if you have family that is not fond of cauliflower rice, my hand is raised. Um, I keep cooking and I keep cooking and I keep adding liquid or broth to it until if that flavor is cooked out and the texture is cooked out. If you don't want to do cauliflower rice, um, I would do uh, either, I would do the brown rice and I have a fried brown rice recipe on my blog as well. I haven't linked it yet to the sweet and sour rice recipe, I was just trying to get it up. Um, so it was actually on the blog. Also, you could just 
I really think this does need to have a, something that goes on top of because it's pretty saucy. Um, and then if you like yours a little bit thicker than this comes out, when you pull out the chicken to shred it, I would do about a quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum, slowly add it and really whisked. Let it sit for a second, cut up your chicken. If it's still not as thick as you want, do another quarter of a teaspoon. It, it will all of a sudden uh, get thick, and um, so I would do it really slowly. And you can use Gluki as well. I just can't use Gluki. It is not good for my stomach. Um, and then this, you can use sides of Asian cucumbers. I've got Asian green bean recipe. Uh, there's lots of different things you could serve with this besides just um, rice. But I do think that it is a saucy chicken, and so I feel like it does need something kind of to sit it on top of instead of just eating it um, by itself. But you could if you wanted, obviously. All right. <laughs> if you have any thoughts, uh, feel free to share. Uh, I'm going to um, call my hairdresser back and she called me twice. Uh, and I don't even have an appointment. Um, but I will talk to you all, I guess, tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.